Welcome to Chapter 12 of Essentials of Healthcare Finance, Financial Analysis of Alternative Healthcare Firms. So this chapter is going to be similar to the previous one, but it covers issues that are unique to other sectors of the healthcare industry. In particular, this chapter covers the following sectors, nursing homes, medical groups, and health plans. It includes detailed coverage of how their revenue sources differ from that of hospitals. Then also covered are some of the tools and concepts that are helpful for analyzing their financial condition and for understanding their operating environment. Our learning objectives are to list the major non-hospital and non-physician sectors of the healthcare industry, to discuss the sources of revenue for the nursing home industry, discuss the major sources of revenue and expense of medical groups, to list and describe the major organizational types of physician groups, and describe alternative HMO organizational arrangements. So for alternative non-hospital healthcare firms, financial measures and concepts discussed in Chapter 11 apply, but there are different sectors within the healthcare industry that have different operating values and standards. For example, health plans have lower days and receivables than hospitals and are required to carry higher cash balances to pay claims. Three major alternative healthcare sectors that we will consider here are long-term care facilities and nursing homes, medical groups, and health plans. Table 12.1 shows financial ratio medians from 2015, and it shows across the top the various types of um, healthcare entities, so nursing homes, health insurers, and hospitals. And here you see the liquidity, days and receivables, as they vary across each of those um, uh, components. And you can follow along uh, to the different uh, categories. Long-term care facilities and nursing homes have been growing in the last decade as baby boomers reach the age of 75 plus years. In 2015, uh, 15,827 nursing homes in the United States. Of those, 68% are investor-owned or for-profit. So many investor-owned nursing homes are part of large national chains, such as Kindred Healthcare or Sun Healthcare Group. And nursing home care is heavily financed by the government through Medicaid. The data shows an increase in public sources of financing and reduction in private funding related to nursing homes. Early in the 1990s, the percentage of Medicare financing increased due to higher hospital discharges. The federal government pays Medicaid nursing home care, but payments are determined at the state level, where there is a wide variation in payment methodology, whether it's retrospective, prospective, or some type of case mix adjustment. It is often one of the largest state expenditures, and it is subject to changes based on economic condition of the state. There's a wide variation in nursing home supply by state. Most states control nursing home care supply and expenditures via licensure laws and certificate of need laws, and the payment rates for Medicaid patients. Restrictive state policies may influence where investor-owned chains operate. Many nursing homes are becoming continuing care retirement communities, or CCRCs, where they provide a continuum of care from independent living to assisted living to skilled care. They market themselves to HMOs that want to cover more residents of CCRCs through Medicare risk contracts. Often residents progress through three levels of care, independent living, then to assisted living, and ultimately at skilled care. Many CCRCs also have specialized units such as Alzheimer's or stroke programs. As you review the consolidated statements in the preceding slides, note the major sources of revenue. The largest source is routine healthcare center services. The second largest are fees from care and services to residents of independent living apartments or assisted living center. And then other sources were entrance fees from amortization and from investment of fee fund. 
The entrance fee fund guarantees that a nursing home bed will be available if needed and that the rate for that nursing home bed will be less than the nursing home's current rates. It represents funds available to meet contractual commitment to provide future care to residents and may be based on age at entrance and is amortized as income as the patient ages or dies. The expense structure is similar to other health care providers. Salaries and wages constitute greater than 50% of total expenses, and depreciation is not shown in the, in the expense section, but it is separately shown as another expense, which is common for not-for-profit CCRCs where replacement of existing assets is not an operating expense. Now let's move on to medical groups. There are approximately 900,000 physicians in the United States, and two-thirds operate in small, meaning one- or two-person practices. And physician expenditures represented $604 billion in 2014 and continues to, to climb as costs escalate. Physicians play an important role in controlling health care costs. And the challenge for physicians to realize cost and quality decision making power is it rests in small practices. And there's a trend towards physicians becoming part of larger organizations. And we've seen that over the last 20 years uh, where hospitals or health plans uh, purchase uh, physician practices and bring them under their umbrella. Uh, or there's large physician controlled medical groups. A significant trend is reduction in financing through out-of-pocket payments from patients. And possible reasons for this could be a decline of indemnity coverage and corresponding increase in HMO and PPO plans, where HMOs require low or no copayment for routine visits, and traditional indemnity plans require coinsurance and deductibles. There's a move toward consumer-driven health plans, which may reverse this trend. Physicians, they receive the larger percentage of total revenue from private insurers than other major healthcare sectors. Medicare covers nearly 100% of hospital service charges for the elderly with 20% coinsurance for physician services. And utilization of phys physician services is also increasing. Here you can see an example on table 12-7 of office visits per year in the 2012 dis distribution by age group. And you can see the larger uh, percentage um, is in that 45 to 64 range. And we're seeing an increase in as, a ba as the baby boomers continue to age and retire, we're seeing that percentage shift. Physicians may choose to align themselves with other physicians through medical groups or hospitals, health plans, or physician practice management firms. Most physicians prefer to align with other physicians to maximize their control. For large-scale integration, massive amounts of financial and human capital are required. Recently, investors, investors started approving external capital. Hospitals do possess capital to create large physician groups, but are limited investment, are limiting investment in this area due to a lack of administrative experience with physician practice management and other different incentives. Health plans also have resources, but they have differing incentives as well, uh, which to reduce fees or salaries of doctors and control utilization. Physician practice management firms offer physicians some type of profit sharing and equity stake in the firm, often acquire physician practices and provide physicians with strong autonomy. Most Americans are covered by either public insurance, private insurance, or a combination of both. The cost of private insurance is rapidly increasing due to administration, reserve retention, and profit. Addition of administrative cost to cost of health care has been debated by policymakers as unnecessary. There are many types of health care insurance companies, be it commercial, Blue Cross Blue Shield, or health maintenance organizations. Some commercial and Blue Cross Blue Shield companies may also provide an HMO option. HMOs provide traditional indemnity programs and allow enrollees to go outside the network. Managed care is simply a system that integrates financing and delivery of healthcare services to enrollees. 
The most common examples are HMOs and PPOs. The PPO is more flexible than an HMO to allow more provider choice. The HMO financial structure shows a small percentage of assets that are invested in property, plant, and equipment. The majority are in cash and investments. Consider this example. Net income and expenses are influenced by member months on a per member per month basis. Administrative expenses increased, and that may be due to higher rates per hospital visit or higher utilization. In the preceding slide, you can see the net income decline is directly related to per member per month premiums increasing less than expenses. Administrative expenses increase through most of this cost, though, though most of this cost is fixed. Further research revealed increased inpatient utilization and higher per diems paid to hospitals that contributed to the inpatient expense increase.